there is something so powerful that wants to emerge through you. A gift that can change your world. These messages come through as a reminder of what your soul already knows. It's already there. It's already within you. And these new earth energies are shifting us at a cellular level. We're being more able to tune the receiver to that broadcast station of source consciousness. Even when things seem glim, when hope is lost, there is a benefit in the lower end of the emotional scale of being able to feel the shame, the guilt, wondering if you're going to live up to your potential. And I'm gonna be showing up a bit differently on this channel because just surfing trending topics and trying to talk about what I think you might want to hear doesn't really bring the full fulfillment. I am really about awakening. I'm really about awakening our consciousness and realizing that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. That practical metaphysics is in the moment to moment to moment awareness of your vibrational being, right? Whether we're in resistance, whether we're not in resistance. So I don't even know what to call this video. But there are musings and messages and inspirations that want to come through. So my job as the conduit is to simply allow what wants to come through. And fundamentally, that's the shift that's going on. The shift that's going on is that we're making ourselves available to the moment. Now, not needing to be perfect, but what is perfection if everything is already perfect? It's hard to see that. It's hard to see that when we're in the shadows. And recently, I, my relationship ended. Um, the house together that I thought I wanted didn't work out. And I've been camping on the land. And, you know, I'm, I've been doing whatever's been presenting itself. Because what happened was, is that I attracted that I was so on my game, I was so in alignment, and I, and I had tapped into this love of the universe, really feeling like I was, you know, gaining this momentum, and I was, and then something came in that kind of put me on another path. And I think that that can happen to any of us, and then it's like you, you start losing yourself in other people, and I think that that's really, the lesson of the empath is to learn how to be in your body and to individuate because this relationship that I was in, I got, I got so sucked into it and I started to lose myself and I started to go off my, kind of off my consistency with my practices, with creating. And, you know, the test can be when you're trying to be someone that you're not, nothing that, nothing really seems to flow properly. And another thing that I, I saw that happened was that I became dependent on this love outside of myself. 
and also I was being taken care of financially. And, you know, I was listening to Joseph Murphy and he, you know, he has a, a myriad of amazing books. And I think this one's called The Infinite Power of Riches Within You. And, you know, he was talking about how the energy of what you give from and the energy from which you receive is really important. And when you give to someone, if you are giving from a place of truly investing or truly giving in a way that feels right. But if you're giving in a way that doesn't see that person in abundance, that is trying to overextend, what it does is that if that person receives it, it makes them feel beholden, makes them feel like they owe you, and it takes them out of their power because then so because then they become dependent on that. And this was a really amazing lesson for me to take my power back and to come back to my own center to realize that I was looking outside of myself. You know, I was looking outside of myself for this love and validation. I was through this relationship. I was looking outside of myself for this abundance. And, and it took me out of my inspiration. And now that I've been reclaiming my own, you know, connection to source as I've been coming back into myself a shift happened where I started to feel like myself again. And I realized that I had some conflicting vibrations going on, some conflicting de desires around what I really wanted. I thought I wanted this relationship, but what I really wanted was to feel love. I thought I wanted to be invested in so I could launch my business, but really what I wanted was to be in my power and in a sense, pull myself up by my bootstraps. And my friend here, I ran into at the spa, said to me about bootstrapping and it reminded me of uh, my shadow work coach a few years ago said to me, do you really do you really think, do you really want to be invested in where it's just all taken care of and you can, you can do your thing, you can do your purpose? Or is that there's a deeper desire that's uncomfortable that you actually, a deeper part of your subconscious or your shadow actually wants the challenge, actually wants the story of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And as I've been camping on the land, rebuilding myself, or really just coming back into alignment with myself, and you know, I've been doing painting, I did some DoorDash, I worked with a meditation studio, and then that didn't really, you know, I thought it was gonna be something stable, it wasn't really stable. And so I left that. And different opportunities started coming to me and I started repeating the phrase God is the source of my supply all my needs are met at every point of time and space you know which is comes from Joseph Murphy and source is my supply all my needs are met now and more opportunities and inspirations have been opening to me and all my needs have been being provided for. Now, this was after I hit rock bottom <laughs> and kind of quote unquote lost everything. And it rem this reminds me of Abraham Hicks who talks about, you know, Jerry used to be a kind of business um, consultant 
And one thing that he noticed is that people would come to him and they would say like, what, or they would say how they just started to lose everything. They would go from this great success and then everything would start to, they, they'd lose the boat and then they'd lose the car and then they'd lose the house or, you know, maybe they didn't ever in case get as extreme, but they would seem to have to lose everything until they started to regain their footing. And this is because the cork is pulled under the water is the example that Abraham uses is that once people get to that point, they finally let go of resistance, but you don't have to get to that point to start to let go of resistance and let the cork float and start letting in abundance because it's always here. The abundance of the air right now, the, the sun shining on my face, the fact that I have nice warm clothes to wear, you know, noticing that my needs are provided for, noticing these synchronistic connections that I have that remind me of, of my true self, or just like noticing what's already there and appreciation and having that appreciation, having that gratitude. And what it started to do is that I hit that point and then I, I started to, I did the shadow work. I, I felt the shame of feeling so stuck and why can't I get this together? And why am, why am I in this relationship that I'm not happy? Why did I, how did I get myself into this? Why am I not providing for myself? Kind of blaming myself for, you know, taking on stuff from other people and realizing I had lost my center, I lost my frame and feeling that low end of the emotion, feeling and, and healing through those shadows and, and feeling that just allowing myself to sit in that place and kind of grieve and, and, and feel how stuck I felt and feel how like, ah, like how out of balance and how, you know, how I felt just so off and just, you know, even kind of sick and just went and just fully embraced it and fully allowed myself to feel those emotions. And then what started to happen is that I started to clear that and I started to come into a situation with more like agency or more just like being able to do my thing and you know like coming back to the inspiration again and coming back to a sense of love for myself and when I was walking on this trail the other day too I ran into a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a long time and you know I was saying about finding this sense of stability and that all these things, this relationship, this house, um, having not had steady work, all this other stuff that was going on, you know, these, these represented stability in my life. And the things that were stable in my life seemed to just disappear like the rug was being swept out from underneath. And that's because these things are not my stability in the external. And so she reflected me, she's like, what is, what is stability? What does it feel like inside of yourself? And then I tapped in and I felt this like solid trunk of a tree and roots going into the earth and seeing myself consistent, seeing myself disciplined, seeing myself waking up and getting inspired and doing my practices and creating and sharing my gifts and realizing my own value. And I think when you get to that point, you start to see things from another perspective. You see how sometimes when the chaos is happening and all these things are falling apart and what looks like it was this stability for you really wasn't is because there's a deeper inner stability. There's a deeper inner worth there's, there's something that's meant for you. There's something that wants to come through you. There's something that's meant to happen for you. And that as you come to that, you realize that even though it looks like you were off track, 
that was you could or you couldn't hear the guidance well maybe that was the guidance coming through in another way is that maybe these moments where you had to make these decisions were actually a part of you being authentic the things that were seemingly the stability were not really because there's something deeper going on inside there's something you know as within so without there's something else that's for you and this reminds me of the science of getting rich there's a passage from that book that you know when i'm talking about this abundance stuff i'm not just talking about money right right now i don't have i don't have money you know like i have enough money to take care of my immediate needs, right? And I believe that more money is on its way to me and that I am destined for success. But, you know, what I'm realizing is that riches include health, include love, include connection to spirit, include the earth, include the gifts, include our connections with other people include the blessings of the divine, include inspiration and creativity. And that these things actually can equate into money and abundance. But riches on, on the riches of the universe, right? It's something that, it's a feeling. But in the science of getting rich, that's what he's talking about is that Sometimes when something isn't, doesn't work out for you is because you didn't ask big enough. Because there's something bigger that's meant for you. And when you, instead of seeing these things as a curse, you're able to see them as a blessing. That sometimes when the chaos is going on, it's like the storm, right? There's the center of the storm. And as you're able to enter the center of the storm, you're able to witness the shadow and not be absorbed and ruled by it. You're able to embrace it. You're able to feel these feelings that are coming up and to clear at a seemingly rapid rate because these new earth energies are coming in and this divine consciousness is orientating the reality and that the point of attraction is aligning you magnetically with your destiny. I see this Whatever a man so thinketh, he shall create. But at the deeper level of the belief of what you're feeling in any moment. And that's why... Look at this beautiful... Raven. At any moment, these signs can come through. And as that chaos subsides, these new opportunities, these new doorways, these new perspectives start to open. And it's like you become present, you become still, and this awakening, this light starts to dawn. And you start to see things that you couldn't see before. And it reorientates the whole perspective like a divine correction to be on your path, to be in the unfolding, to be receptive to the inspiration so you can be in that creative flow state. And sometimes that low, that hitting the wall, that rock bottom is just a sweet moment of clarifying what it is that you want, clarifying to reclaim your worth, clarifying that you don't have to be dependent on this external stimuli, that you can find these qualities within yourself. And that seems to be the essence of these spiritual teachings, these profound, practical 
metaphysical teachings of the ages all point to finding the lasting happiness within yourself. And I believe that happiness unlocks our heart's desire. And this is why meditation helps us to shift. And this is also why, instead of spiritually bypassing it, to actually feel the low emotions, to, feel, to integrate the shadow, to heal the inner child and the wounds of our past, unlocks and unearths these gifts and treasures, alchemizes the lead into the gold, and allows us to bring the, dark, the light into the darkness and the darkness into the light and to free ourselves of limited thinking and beliefs and be able to expand our consciousness into a new perspective and to be able to free up our bandwidth to create. So I've got a meditation on this channel for shadow work that I highly recommend you check out next. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next video.